Let's go to the Lord in prayer, y'all. Holy God, I'm not worthy to proclaim the good news about your son, Jesus. Only you are. And I pray that you would set me aside today and that you would give this message. And Lord, that we would receive it as, as if coming straight from you. And we pray that you would be glorified in it. Through your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I was in Kroger Thursday afternoon. I think it was Thursday afternoon. And you know, it was it was at I don't know if y'all go Kroger University, that one there. And usually around five o'clock, there's kind of a, a rush hour there at Kroger. It kind of gets a little packed for a little bit for about an hour or something like that. People trying to get stuff for dinner and whatever. Just run in and get a few things. And, and, and I was doing the same thing. And uh, I ended up, you know, trying to find a, a, a short line to get in, you know, after I got my, my stuff. And uh, lo and behold, uh, some of y'all know Billy Huddleston. Y'all might know Billy. He owns Knack Burger, right? And I think his folks own, uh, what do y'all do? Turn the line off. Right, right here, over here, girlfriend. Right there. All right, Billy Huddleston, all right, and, and, and anyway, his folks on, uh, what's that, Butcher Boys, Butcher Boys. yeah, so, so, I mean, they're, got girls out here in the school at Central High, anyway, I mean, I, I, I wheel up there in line behind Billy, and uh, he, he turns around and looks at it, of course, I see him at that burger every Saturday, so long. and uh, he said, I've been meaning to thank you. I said, what did I do? <laughs> he said, well, he said, I've got girls that are in, in the uh, athletics over here at Central Heights. And he said, I ended up having to go over there at night to pick them up. And he said, that corner there at 698 has been pitch black. And he said, y'all put lights out there on that church. And he said, I just want you to know I appreciate that because now I can see where to turn. And I said, well, I, you know, I can't take credit for that. You know, I was like, they did that. I, you know, so anyway, he, he said, well, well, I'm going to tell you. He said this. And he went on and said this. He said, you have saved somebody's life by putting those lights on that church. And he said, it's probably mine. Because <laughs> obviously he had had some issues, you know, turning in here at dark. Oh, yeah. So guess what, y'all? The church exists to shine the light Amen. into the darkness. Do you get that? Amen. It's not just physical lights, but it's the light of God's love flowing through us. And yes, the world is dark out there. Without Christ's light, this world is pitch black. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. Guess what? Like we were talking, Carol. There's somebody else a working too. And he's a liar. And he's a thief. And... Well, John says this, just a few verses prior to this little passage, he says this, who is a liar? Now, I, I, you know, I understand this is not politically correct right now, if it ever has been, but it certainly isn't now in our in society that is, is all about inclusivity and tolerance, and that means, in our modern definition, that means, well, we're all the same. It's all, it's, it doesn't matter. There are many paths to God, right? So, so all one's as good as another one, as good as another one. Guess what? That's a lie. <laughs> and John calls them out. <clears throat> and who is a liar, he says in 1 John 2, 22 and 23. 
Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ, anyone who denies the Father and the Son, check this out, is an antichrist. That, that, that's pretty powerful language, right? I mean, that's language from Revelation about an antichrist. And he goes on to say, anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. <laughs> Now, y'all, I didn't come, I didn't, I don't, I don't come here today trying to get y'all to be, in, you know, mean to people, mean-hearted to people, to discriminate against anybody, to, to, to go out and, and, and badmouth anybody, but I, I do tell you this so that you don't fall into that trap. There is a big trap in our society today that says... Well, and, and there, I've seen it on Christian uh, news sites. There's there's a there's a there's a professor at a, at a major Christian uh, college somewhere. Is it Wheaton College? That wears one of those uh, head coverings, and she says we all worship the same God. Oh no, you do not. If you are a practitioner of Islam, you have to say the Shahada. And in saying the Shahada, you say that there is only one God and his name is Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. And in so saying those words, you deny Christ. And you say, he's not the son of God. He's not God's prophet. It's Muhammad. Don't fall for that trap. It's a lie, people. It's from, guess where? The enemy. Who wants you to just embrace it all and say, oh, it's all good. You know, that Oprah Winfrey three theology of the warm fuzzies. No. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I hate to burst your bubble. And I don't want you to go out and be mean to somebody. I want you to pray for them. God loves them too. He doesn't want them to, to, to continue in that. He wants them to know Jesus because that's, that's our hope and our salvation is in the Son of God, y'all. That's it. I saw something on, I, I, you know, I just goof around. Sometimes I, I, I search stuff up on, on the internet when I'm working on my sermon. And, 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 and I, you know, I searched up how to be, well, uh, something about an antichrist, I forget just what, and I found this article, How to Be an Antichrist. Oh, wow. Yes, it was like, what? I was like, I don't even want this displayed on my computer. You know, I was like, God. But there was a book written called The Story of B, B, the letter B, like, beast. yeah, beast. <laughs> That's appropriate. By Daniel Quinn, and this was this was just an article that kind of compiled his his thoughts. Now, guess what? You're going to get it. I think you'll get it. It says uh, here's what's his his advice on how to be an antichrist: liberate yourself from all gods, messiahs, and believe only what survives rigorous scientific proof. Okay, so don't believe anything. Secondly, live for your own self interest. Live for old number one, right? Exalt number one. It's all about me, right? Uh, question anyone who appears to live contrary to his own self-interest. You know, don't, don't, don't accept what they say. Just be suspicious about it. Uh, observe the way that other cultures preserve the spark of life in nature. And teach others to do the same. I mean, that was just some of them. There was a bunch more. <laughs> I just kind of gave giving you the Reader's Digest version. Uh, sorry, y'all. I mean, I know this is not uplifting, but you got to know. Well, there's well, there's light. There's also darkness. Okay, and you got to got to know where it's coming from, and don't fall into that trap. Please don't fall into that trap. All right. Okay. Enough about that. Um, the truth, the truth is Jesus. 
He is our hope and our salvation. He is the one who went to the cross. He's the only one who could. And he's the only one who would do it to pay the price for our sins. He's the Holy One of Israel, the spotless Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the earth. He is our Savior, our Lord, and our King. It is Him. He is the truth. And in, in, in 1 John 2.20, John says this, But you're not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit. All of you know the truth. And the truth lives in you by God's power. It's the Spirit of God that lives in you that guides you. Listen to Him. He will lead you to the truth, and the truth is Jesus. Amen? Amen. And it's, it's not... And guess what? That Spirit of God leads us away from trying to exalt ourselves, from trying to chase our tail, you know, that, uh, that happiness is found in chasing. It is, it's, and that's such a, a good metaphor because the harder we chase happiness, the, the, you know, it eludes us. It continues to elude us. It's just out of reach. And when we try to serve old self, we're never happy. We're never satisfied. It's a lie. Guess what? It, it's a false religion serving yourself. You'll never satisfy yourself. But the cool thing is when you start ministering to other people, when you, when you make it about God and about others, like, like Gene and Bill talked about at the Arbors, they're the ones who get the blessing. It's a blessing. When you do that, you're the one who gets the blessing. And, that's, and you end up with that happiness that you sought directly and could never get it. It comes from serving others. Y'all, I, 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 this may be difficult for me to explain to y'all. I mean, I, I, I mean I'm mean, i a, a, well, in, in a lot of cultures, I'd be an old man, right? I mean, seriously. I mean, some cultures, they don't live as long as I'm a lot, around now. And in some ages in the past, I would be ancient pretty much, you know. In Jesus' day, I would be an old dude, right? I mean, 58. Uh, but I've, I've experienced a good bit in this life, and, and I have, uh, you know, I've experienced, uh, just as you all have, love for others, right? Uh, in different ways. Um, and, I, you know, I love my family. I really do. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. I've never experienced anything like when I was sitting in that, that Mexican restaurant eating that chimichanga that day in Corrigan, Texas, minding my own business, and God ripped my heart open and he shined his light into my heart for a, a, a kid in China that hadn't even been born yet. I mean, it was it was it was all awesome. I've never felt anything like that before or since, and it was it was crippling. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't think of anything else. It overwhelmed my, and it was so pure and good and loving and kind and merciful. You know, it had to come from God. That's God's love, y'all. He loves you that way. And he wants us to be about reaching out to other people. Because those who, who, who don't know Christ, he loves them too. Amen. And he wants them to know him. He loves them with an undying love that, that is pure and holy. And when we, the church, tell them that it's okay that they know God, we just lie to them. Don't do it. Be the light of Christ in this world and, and, and help point them to Jesus, okay? And you know what? Just as Carol was talking about, the devil puts obstacles in front of us. You know, I can't tell you, you know, what, what, what Jesus was telling me to go get Lucy, I can't tell you the gazillion obstacles that came in my way. First of all was, you know, $20,000 that, 
that little thing, I was going to seminary, I was, wasn't making that much. I mean, I'm like, hmm? how, how, wait, what? But you know what? We did. I mean, God provided, and we went and got that girl. And I thank God every day that we got her. And, you know, I wish I could go get a dozen more. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but some some have gotten more. Some have gotten more. Yeah, she's choking me over here. But you know, it's the love of God. I mean, don't focus on the obstacles. I mean, I I, I had an hour and a half conversation with a young lady that, that I you know I think of very highly of uh, from Dallas that called me this past week and. You know, she feels like the Lord's calling her in her direction, and, and she's like, but, you know, look at all the, like, take one step. Just take a step. Don't think about, you know, all the obstacles. Quit doing that. If you think God's wanting you to do it, you take the step. Trust Him. And, and you know, when he, when, after you take that step, take another step. You know, just, just trust Him and see what He does. You know, I can't tell you how it's going to all work out. I just know that it will. Uh, so trust God, and, and He will provide a way, which is, brings me to my next point, the way. Um, John talks about remaining in fellowship with Christ, and he's talked about this back in his gospel because he's quoting Jesus there in John 15, 5, Yes, I'm the vine, you're the branches, those who remain in me, and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. You know, we can come up with all kind of whiz-bang ideas and programs and ministries and all this kind of stuff here, and, but you know what? If God ain't in it, we're, we're just howling at the moon. Amen. Amen. And we can, we can chase our tail trying to do things, and wear ourselves out and, and not impact anything. But if we're following God and His way, it'll bear fruit, right? I mean, it, it, sometimes God doesn't speak, you know, when we want Him to. Sometimes we have to kind of wait around and see. I don't know. I mean, do I? I don't. I don't have all the answers. Um, I, let me tell you about a, 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 when we were coming back from. Uh, China with Lucy ten, over 10 years ago, we had had to take multiple airplanes. We ended up in from Guangzhou to Hong Kong, from Hong Kong to Seoul, Korea at Incheon Airport. And we had a long way over at Incheon. So we found out when we were there that they had a, a kid's playground inside that. At the time, it was a fairly new airport. Uh, so we, we went to this... Uh, you know, playground, so Caleb and Lucy could go in there and, and play, and we're sitting there, and we're the only ones there, and it, it, you know, we haven't been there long, and this uh, American guy comes in, and he has a couple of kids, and I, I think one of them uh, may have been Asian of some sort, and, uh, you know, we end up in a conversation after a few minutes. Long story short, he's a He's a kingdom worker in a country over there that's hostile to the gospel. And he's been there for years. And uh, I gave him my email address. And I get this little new, or mailing address, and, and I get this little newsletter from him every quarter. Um, and, and it was really neat. This, this, he shares in here hmm, that 14 years ago, he said 14 years ago today, we lost my fourth child. He was born, you know, deceased. It had an and, 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 and encephalite, whatever, encephalitis or whatever, or something, uh, whatever that would be. Um, and she was born deceased. Uh, and he said, uh, we put on our tombstone, we put this John 12, 24, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, 
it abides alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. We said, you know, out of that, we started, we called her Angel, and we, we named a ministry after her. Uh, he's a physician, and he began years later to, uh, to train others, native people from that country, medicine, how to be physicians. These were believers, okay? They're believers in Christ, and now they're, they're physicians. And he, and he took the first group of them to Cambodia, and they ministered just this last month or two. And he said that uh, on that same day, 14 years later, that the young lady who's, who's part of this light ministry, the light, L-I-G-H-T, light ministry that they call it, used that same John 12 passage in her devotional that morning that she gave to the group. And she shared about service to him. It was not about position, power, money, but that even in death, God could bring new life, yielding much fruit, and that it's about serving others. Hmm. All I've ever done for him is pray for him. I've never sent him a dollar. Ten years later, I'm still getting a newsletter from him. From a, he came out of a Wesleyan church in Kansas. And if God will help me, I won't send it to money. <laughs> so, uh, God is at work, people. Amen. All over this world. And he's at work in our little old corner of the world in, in, in Central Heights, Nacogdoches, Texas. He's shining that light. He, but we have to stay in fellowship with him. We have to stay plugged into him. We have to, to read his word. We have to pray. We have to worship him. We have to be around other believers that, that encourage us, that help hold us accountable that keep us from focusing on all the bad stuff, right? Because it seems we can all do that real quick, right? I mean, it, it, we've all got it. It's real easy to do. But when you focus on Jesus, when you focus on Jesus, He does something in your heart. He shines that love light into your heart. And, and the cool thing about it is it shines out. It's not to be bottled up and cooped up in there because you'll just get puffed up and you'll swell up and blow up. <laughs> you know? Because he wants to let it out. He wants you to let it out. Love people, you know. And you'll bear fruit for the kingdom of God. It, there is nothing greater than to work for God. You know, the Lord of the universe. And, and to bear fruit, to do something that He wants you to do, and touch a heart and a life, and bring Him some glory. Wow! And guess what? The cool thing is, you're adding up treasure for yourself in heaven when you do that. You're storing up treasure. I mean, we got, we've all got an account up there that's going cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. <laughs> So don't you want to store up some cool treasure up there, huh? Amen. <laughs> and I don't even know what that means. I don't think we, any of us really know what that means. But uh, we can look at this old mess we might store up down here. And You know, I, I got a new truck here a while back, and, and uh, like an old preacher told me 20 years ago, he said, when that thing rolls off the assembly line, it's on the way to the dump. <laughs> it's just a matter of how long it's going to take for it to get there. And that's right. He's right. It's going to end up in the junkyard pretty soon. It ain't going to be that long. But anything we do for God, you know, is there forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. And you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed for doing it here in this life. So hang on to Him and let that Spirit of God lead you into the truth, which is Jesus.
It's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So hang in there. I had some more stuff, but I'm going to shut up so y'all can go eat breakfast. <laughs>